but I need to be I need to be absolutely certain I don't say anything that um, can be attributed badly or can reflect badly on this organization or this community or these decentralized members so a very interesting question um Everyone has a slightly different understanding of what the fellowship is, all right? And um, but my personal opinion is it's meant to be a steward uh, or someone to guide uh, the technical changes that come into Polkadot, right, or Substrate, uh, and potentially Cumulus, which is another repo that most a lot of the power chains use when they're trying to build their 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 power chains. But it's meant most to be like a, a voice of reason or a voice of guide, and 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 give guidance or advice or even implement fixes when required. Um, and it, it's not necessarily only parity people. We have people outside, obviously I'm outside of parity. It's quite a few people gave from Invarch. Uh, I've got Sean from, um, uh, I think Polytop Labs. We've got quite a few, we've got Brian from McCullough. We've got different people who are different levels um, uh, who aren't necessarily parity or W3F. Sure, so the fellowship, uh, is the response to maybe providing even more decentralization to the already decentralized system? Uh, in Gov1, as we call it, we had this concept of the technical committee that uh, was in charge of uh, like passing high fast tracking certain technical. Uh, changes to the chain, uh, but this committee was uh, for many uh, was mainly just the parity Web3 Foundation new newcomers to to come and join. Then we yeah. got open golf. Uh, we got the now everything is a referendum. Everybody votes on anything. Any anyone can propose changes. You have many tracks and many things to. Uh, and many things can happen simultaneously in 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 the open gov but sometimes you want these technical uh, changes uh, like a runtime upgrade something that is important to still be fast tracked and, and have priority and that's where we got this whitelist uh, track uh, the whitelist track in the in open gov uh, is a self-governing body which is the fellowship yeah and the fellowship is a group of experts uh, that have been building uh, the core protocol um is a ranked collective means people uh, start at certain uh, a certain level like large you have these different bells and you start going up uh, first down second down and so on yeah. Uh, so anyone can join, for example, from range uh, from Dan one, like I'm a humble fellow. That means I'm just uh, in the beginning of that ladder. Uh, the group was preceded with a lot of members, mostly from parity that uh, have a lot of expertise in the protocol and that can vote for a lower ranks to be promoted to a newer rank yeah so um there'll be proposals being posted there's a fellowship room that's public anyone can join in and what normally happens is uh there'll be any fellowship member can propose uh something they'd like to uh, implement on chain right and then they have their own track on open gov that uh, that they can vote on on items that are same pro process when you're trying to join the fellowship. It also has its own track that people in the fellowship can vote. Um, so uh, an example of what was recently um, um, posted was a proposal to open up channels between, I think, three or four different chains and state mine. Oh, right? yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah. 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 So, so uh, it, it was meant to be like a batch call to open up so many different channels of state mine, um, uh, and it was the fellowship that said that that was 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 asked 
to look at this? Does this make sense? Is, is this a risk to the network in any way? Um, and if if not, can you approve it? At the moment, uh, like if you just join the, the fellowship, this is not much to do. The fellowship doesn't have any power to make any change in the network. It just votes in whitelist any referendum that is proposed in this wh uh, whitelist track. Yeah. It's kind of giving a check of approval saying uh, this proposal we think is uh, appropriate, is, is a good change for the network. And then it gets fast track. It means like it doesn't need to wait for a very long uh, voting decision period and confirmation like in the root track. It can pass much, much quicker because some upgrades uh, to the runtime might be critical and might need a uh, to, to be implemented very quickly. Okay. Um, in the moment, uh, fellows, uh, fellows are from the rank number three. So from the rank number three uh, upwards, that, that needs to be whitelisted. Uh, but if you are just getting started, like somebody proposed you to become part of the fellowship, you start as a candidate in rank zero. And then the more you work, the more you uh, contribute to the core repositories like Substrate, Polkadot, Cumulus repositories that are in the parity organization, then uh, you get the chance to be promoted later. So that was that was a uh, I was very lucky, right? I was very lucky because uh, I was both lucky and unlucky. But I was lucky that I uh, that I had people who who, who were able to uh, recognize the work that I did. Originally, I tried applying. Uh, the process was, I mean, this is irrelevant now, but there was a seeding involved where people applied to join the initial batch of the fellowship right the seeding of the the fellowship itself um and the requirements then are the same as the requirements now and that's why i'm bringing it up which is you have to highlight what your contributions were to the polka dot core repos right so those are mainly three repositories being substrate which is the framework right yeah. uh, polka dot which everything is the relay yeah is polka dot right and then um finally cumulus is the repo i mentioned earlier those are the three repositories that make up the core protocol that that virtually all chains use regardless of whether they're power chains so cumulus in this perspective or or solo chains who could be using polka dot on and substrate right um so you have to have a contribution a core contribution to to that uh, all, and then, all three of them or only one of them uh at least one of them i had all three but i think they might get more stringent uh that it, it can't just be like a uh, a change to documentation for example yeah. or deem uh uh of of substance right uh, so we had we had one person I think apply originally, and they said, "Well, this, 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 these contributions, although small, to all three, uh, are not are not uh, large enough." So we encourage you to continue, right? Uh, continue contributing, and then you'll get in for sure. So once you once you have those contributions, next thing is you have to go find someone to to recommend you. So that's how it starts. Someone within the fellowship can has to say. Look, I propose that, you know, let's say Claudia in this example or Sam uh, joins and here's what they have done. Well, here's what he or she has has done to qualify them to join. Right. So you've got this recommendation for someone inside the fellowship and your recommendation. And those are the only two items that you need to to get in, really. Then uh, it's just a track where people within the fellowship vote. Right, whether or not they think the contribution deems you entrance, <laughs> and then you you're that's when you join. Yeah, there is there is, when the fellowship concept was created, it was uh, conceived by Gavin by like writing down the the purpose of the fellowship in a manifesto. So there is 
some repository in GitHub with the latest updates, the, the, the latest version of the manifesto that clearly states what the fellowship is about, uh, different ranks, their roles, for example, how long they should have been building to get into that rank, the kind of contributions they should make. Yeah. Uh, but for starters, it's relatively simple. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are a developer that you think you maybe you have done a simple contribution to the ecosystem, uh, but you think you can continue contributing and you would like to go that uh, in that rabbit hole of like becoming a core developer, uh, you can just come to your community and say, hey, I'd like to become a member. Uh, right now, you have to be um, like somebody from any rank, like for example, I'm in the rank one, so I can, I I'm allowed to uh, propose new candidates that, that will join in rank zero. Uh, so anyone say like, okay, this person can uh, like, seems like a, someone with potential, let's promote him to be become the rank zero. And then this person becomes a candidate. And then from candidate to the next stage, which is the humble fellow, then you are also promoted by somebody from the next uh, rank. Oh, and so on and so forth. Like, uh, so you like can only be promoted proposal. by somebody a rank higher than you. Yeah, correct. Uh, and then it's voted on, and then the other fellows agree. And this person either or joins as a candidate or goes to rank one or two and so on. Uh, but it's my understanding that, that we want this uh, to be even more open. So you don't need to be recommended, let's say. But anyone trustlessly just goes on chain and says, I want to become a candidate. Sure. So at the moment, there are no clear responsibilities. It's kind of like a self-driven thing. Uh, when when you start, for example, like I, I uh, when the fellowship was in the seeding stage, uh, I proposed my candidacy as I had done some minor contributions to the substrate repository uh, and, and some tooling, uh, like also education in the ecosystem and so on. So it was uh, decided like, okay, I should start in rank number one. Uh, most people in the fellowship are uh, Parity Technologies uh, employees, as they have been, is their work to uh, be constantly working on the on, on the core repositories and, and delivering the important features that make the system work. Yeah. So in the future, I can. I can say, oh, okay, I really want to contribute to the core repositories. I have a lot of maybe ideas on how certain things should be implemented. So I can come on my own and say, okay, let's implement X feature. Uh, let's say uh, have it reviewed by other fellows. And the more contributions I make then maybe Later, other members will say, okay, this person deserves to be promoted to a, a, new, follow, rank. a, a new rank. Okay. Uh, so at the beginning, let's say it's kind of messy. It's more, a lot, a lot of the stuff is going on more uh, on, on parity side, maybe slightly in closed doors. I imagine in the future, the more decentralized the system gets, like, for example, some parity employees might leave parity to then just leave off the the chain and be full time fellow members. Because I was the very first person to join, right? And uh, there was no clear process, yeah. so I had to speak to people within the fellowship and say, oh, "I'd like to join, and here's my uh, here's my what I've done, here's my contribution." And they're like, "Yeah, we're happy voting for you." I don't want to be the person to initialize this because it has never been done before. So I don't want to be the one to test this out in production. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rank one, which is the lowest rank possible. Uh, you start off at 
uh, rank one. And then what happened? Actually, you start off at rank zero. You start off you start as a candidate, no? Yes, and that's that's rank zero. And then what happens is people uh, vote to 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 promote you to one rank, and then uh, you go up certain levels. And I think up till rank five, that's when the public needs to vote you to get promoted rather than the fellowship. And also only people of equal or lower rank to the rank you're applying to can can vote for you to reach that rank. Up to rank five, I think, which is where um, only the public can, can really promote you further. So someone wants to reach Gav or Basti's level, then I think the public needs, or Rob, Rob's also rank six. Hmm. Um, yeah. Then, and I think the, the, the community need to vote them in. Yeah, so at the moment, um, uh, we are encouraged to vote on whitelist or call tracks uh, when we want to implement a fix. So there was recently a proposal by Brian from McCullough to, 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 what's the word, delay an upgrade on Kusama. Um, and that also went through the whitelisted track. Um, what I think think we're also uh we're, we're going to try push for is to ensure that people within the fellowship continue contributing to the repo it's not a one-off thing right you're meant to continue contributing to the repository you want you're meant to continue pushing yourself up and also you're meant to bring more people into the fellowship right we want more people to join because it becomes more decentralized and the more people who join the more people who are aware of Polkadot and all their uh, repositories, and and that can only be a good thing to our, for our ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think what we need to do as as a group in the fellowship itself is is try and promote more people join. Um, we don't want to be an exclusive group, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, but also highlight where. Things like, for example, documentations lacking. We, I think, the fellowship could help there. Um, but th I, I, for example, I'm I'm looking at potentially looking at benchmarks. There's the uh, benchmarks have been overhauled, basically. So I'm looking at maybe contributing there. Async backing. What Rob's working on, I'm really keen on on touching that as well. Yeah. Um, uh, those are the main two things that I'm 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 really interested. And on the back of my head, um, there's this issue that I don't think it's even possible to solve. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we can do rooted traffic. So a load balancer. So then you have 5% of traffic going to one runtime and then 95% going to another runtime. And the reason why I want to do it is because it can pr potentially protect people who deploy something new and then they realize, oh, actually it broke a lot of things. Ooh. So then you have a fall back. You fall back to a safe state. You fall back to a safe mode. I don't know if we can do that, right? Because every single runtime needs to be the same. So I don't know how we can split the traffic. Um, but what we can do, uh, and I've spoken to Rob about this earlier, um, is have some form of fall back or safe mode to sort of say something screwed up. Let's go back to safe mode. Yeah. So we continue. The reason we're doing all of this is to ensure that we're always producing blocks. We should never be in a situation where the chain is not producing blocks. So I've been really lucky um, uh, that uh, there was a point where we were we were fine on the on the chain part, and we were lacking on the UI part. So the team basically had some time to 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 teach themselves react right because that's what we were working on react and yeah. i had i had a, an annoying issue around warp sync right where that's how i got into the fellowship by building out this warp sync provider to allow parachains so relay chains validators are able to warp sync parachains couldn't at the time right okay. so i said this is something that could really help the community it can really help it could help us right so that's why i went down the warp sync route um, and I think what's really important is to not lose track of, of your responsibilities as, as 
uh, even a lowest member in the fellowship, your responsibility to push the ecosystem forward. So it doesn't necessarily mean just um, sending PRs, it, it being active in the community, be answering questions, uh, getting involved in the forum, getting involved in discussions, because you're trying to guide this protocol, this network forward. Nervous, nervousness, really. I don't want to let anyone down. Um, uh, uh, it's the constant learning around, you know, the process, because the processes are new, um, and making sure you vote or anything. But I think really it's trying to, trying to ensure that anything I say, anything I do does not reflect badly on my colleagues in the fellowship, right? Um, I don't want to let them down. I don't want, I don't want to, like, I'm even nervous about making jokes publicly that can be then attributed to, <laughs> to the fellowship, right? Yes, yes. So, so I now know it's a, it's a responsibility, but still there's some credence, there's some credibility that's attributed to me because I'm part of that fellowship. So I need to be, I need to be absolutely certain. I don't say anything that, um, can be attributed badly or can reflect badly on this organization or this community or these decentralized members. So there, there might be several challenges to overcome, like centralization may, may be one of those. Yeah, we need to maybe right now as a, an independent fellow that would like to 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 uh, start contributing. Like they're not clear. Well, it's very self-driven, but maybe they, they come. It could become more of a in this open chats and discussions like yeah maybe we need this and that and any roadmaps or any plans maybe be more uh, open and uh, and share with the the rest of the ecosystem so new fellows can jump on board and say okay i would like to join this this team uh, this division to to contribute to this specific part of the protocol uh, Currently, a lot of those things are just handled internally by parity. I'm very interested in being in, in active in the in the open golf discussions, and I feel we that we live off the treasury that that can feel the pain of uh, the limitations open golf currently has. Yeah. Uh, that way, uh, I don't know. Recently, we've seen how. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of discussion about certain how certain things should be better. How, for example, we can improve the treasury spending. How can we do certain things uh, that often need a runtime upgrade, some uh, change that that might need to touch some core elements of the protocol, and things. A company like Parity or other other teams that uh, have their own funding and don't depend on on open golf to to be for their own sus uh, sustainability. Yeah. Then it becomes a like it will be interesting that that you if you have more people depending on the in the in the treasury, then they will be interested in changing those things. Right now, as it's not. Uh, the, the the companies that uh, or like the the teams that are working in the core protocol don't don't seem maybe don't don't depend on on this treasury and uh, may not have as a high priority to make certain changes in the network. A very interesting question. Um, not so much at the moment, I would say. Uh, as most members are parity employees. Uh, this creates some level of centralization, but I'm positive uh, that, that it will become more and more decentralized. Uh, yeah, as non, like as as a bit of an outsider, uh, I have this hope that yeah, maybe more of the current members will become independent and work uh, on chain. Uh, but it takes time because. Right now, we, we are moving fast. Uh, there are a lot of features that need to be implemented. This initial centralization helps uh, moving things faster. 
So it's not too bad. Uh, it's, it's not too bad a thing, but definitely in the long term, we need this system to like these kind of collectives to be uh, way more decentralized. So yeah. we have bring more opinions. Uh, we bring more uh, perspectives to, to the ecosystem, no, not just following the roadmap of a single entity. Uh, no, not right now. Right. Uh, but that's okay. Cause it's new, right? We just started. Uh, I think the fact that it is mostly parity in web three people means by its very nature, it isn't right. Um, but the concept can be applied, right? So I've talked to Joe about this, where what happens if we have a para chain specific fellowship? Right, which are made up of technical people from different power chains. Right, it doesn't necessarily have to be the the relay chain fellowship. But it could be a different fellowship that comes in and 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 tries to highlight gaps that are needed that yeah. don't necessarily um, uh, don't necessarily uh, are highlighted as gaps by the relay chain or by the technical fellowship on the, on on the relay chain. So I think I've talked about this with with people within, I think governance and 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 and, and poker house where we're saying why don't we create this this parachain fellowship that says, oh we need a block explorer right I've talked about this in AAG before where we need an open source block explorer that everyone can use everyone can contribute to, that could be something that this parachain fellowship proposes. So yeah. this is a pain point all parachains feel. We'd like someone to build this out for us right and we'll be we'll be the the auditors let's say of the code or we'll be the ones who will say this is good enough or this is not good enough for us 